In this video, I'm gonna show you how to cheat in Blender by modeling around this image to turn it into an actual 3D object using UV modeling. Now, I'm only kidding. I don't think this is actually cheating, but I am curious to know what you guys think. Is UV modeling cheating or not? Let me know in the comments what you think. All right, let's get started. All right, so the very first thing that we have to do is make sure that images as planes is turned on. And the way that we do that is come up here to edit and then come down to preferences, make sure that you're in add-ons and then just type image. And then this one should pop up for you and it is import images as planes. Now make sure that this is enabled because this is actually different than just bringing in a plane and then trying to apply an image material to it because that will stretch whatever image you have into the shape of the plane, which is a square. And having it this way with image as planes, it will come in to Blender already in the right dimensions. There's no stretching or anything. So make sure that you have images planes turned on and we can get started. So now I'm going to go ahead and delete the default cube by hitting delete and then hit shift and A to bring in an image as plain. And once I've selected that, I can come up here to the look dev mode so that I can actually see what's going on with this plane. And now you don't have to do this, but I'm going to go ahead and scale this image by 30 because it's a building and I want it to be, you know, big. <laughs> so I'm going to scale by 30 and then move this up on the Z axis by 15 so that it sits nicely on this grid here. Now, one thing that's really important is to make sure that your image is actually straight. And I got this picture from textures.com, but there's many websites out there that just has, you know, plain pictures like this. But I had to take this into Photoshop because it wasn't straight up and down. And you can see the edges here on the sides that there's a little bit of white. And that's from me rotating it in Photoshop. And the reason that we have to make sure that it's very straight is that we're doing a lot of edge loops. And if your picture is not totally straight, your edge loops aren't gonna line up right. So it's really important to make sure that your picture is actually straight, at least if you're gonna do buildings or something that needs a lot of edge loops. Other like small things don't really necessarily need that, but things like buildings where we're gonna have tons of lines everywhere, it's a lot easier to make sure that it's straight. Okay, so first I'm going to make sure that my image is selected by left clicking it. Then I can hit tab to go into edit mode and then I can hit Control and R to create an edge loop. And then I'm just going to drag this over to the side of the building that I wanna keep. And I'm gonna do that for the other side and then again for the top part. So basically what I'm doing is I'm outlining the part that I wanna keep so that I can delete the part that I don't wanna keep. So I can come in here now and <laughs> you can see that this did not get lined up very well so I'm gonna select it. I hit two to come into edge select here. So now I can hit G two times. So GG to slide this edge so that it lines up a little better. Let's slide this one too with GG. And then how's this one look? That one looks okay, we can keep that one. So next I can go into face select by hitting three on my keyboard. And then let's just select all these pieces that I don't wanna keep, hit delete and then delete faces. And so there we go. Now we've got the front part of the building and this is the part that I wanna keep. All right, and now comes the fun part. I'm basically gonna do the exact same thing again. I'm going to trace every line that I wanna keep with edge loops. Now you can get as in depth with this as you want or as minimal as you want with this, but I'm gonna go ahead and speed through this part because it's kind of boring and it's gonna take a couple minutes. Okay, so I'm just about done here. As you can see, it's kind of tedious in certain spots, but what I am noticing is that I have this whole like kind of line of vertices and it's kind of making an arc and I just, I really want it to be straight up and down. So what I'm gonna do is select these and if I just hit G and Y, you can see that it's moving the texture around. So what I can do to fix that is come up here to options and then hit correct face attributes and then hit G and then Y. And so now you can see that as I move it, it's not messing up the texture at all. And I'm gonna do that for this one also. Just grab it and then move it over here. So now it's just, it's more in a nice straight line. All right, next up is when we start actually extruding all of these faces that we just made. And this part's really fun because we can actually see our model coming to life now. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit three on my keyboard to move into face select mode. And I'm gonna start by selecting all the faces that I think need to 
be extruded first or the faces that I think are gonna be closest to the camera. So I think that's gonna be these columns here and let's move the angle a little bit like this so that we can see what we're doing. And then I'm gonna hit E on my keyboard to extrude and I think I'm gonna bring this out to 0.15 and then hit enter and there you go. You can see that we have extruded these edges just a little bit to kind of bring depth to it. And you can tell that it looks a little weird here. So I'm gonna come over to the material settings and then make sure that show back face is not selected and there we go. Now you can see that the texture has kind of fixed itself, although we still get some stretching, but more on that in a little bit on how to fix all that. So I'm gonna come back into this view here and then select the next set of faces that I think need to be extruded. And I'm also making sure that I'm not unselecting anything because I need to continue to extrude these columns and everything that I select. So it's like an additive process. So we're always adding to what we're extruding here. And maybe this one, and I don't think there's really a right or wrong way to do this, just kind of what you feel like needs to continue to move. So now I'm going to hit E on my keyboard again for extrude and then maybe 0.1 this time instead of 0.15. And from now on, I think I'll probably do 0.1 because I just want little extrudes. And there we go just a little bit there. And then let's select the next one, which is probably this face here. And then probably this one, probably this one, and probably this one. And we'll come over here and hit E to extrude and then point one again. And so we're basically just gonna keep doing this over and over until we've gotten basically every face selected. And you know, I've done this building multiple times now just for various reasons. And I think that I have probably selected faces and extruded them in different ways each time that I've done it. So I don't think there's really a right or wrong way to do it, just kind of what you feel like as you're doing it. So again, I'm gonna speed up this process because it's gonna take a couple minutes. Okay, and I think I have now extruded every face on here. We've got a lot of really messy faces that we're gonna have to clean up, but you can see that we've got some actual geometry now on our plane, which is really cool. Now, I will say that this process does add a lot of unneeded vertices to our object. And if we come into edit mode by hitting tab, you can see that we've just got a ton of lines and vertices everywhere. And it's just because we've been extruding so much. Now, depending on what you wanna use this model for, you may not care. Like if you just wanna have this for art, then who cares about all these vertices? But if you need to make this for like a game or something where you need optimized objects, then you're gonna wanna make sure that you clean up a lot of this stuff. And the way that we do that is let's come into edge select by hitting two on the keyboard and then hit alt when we select one of these and that will select the whole line of them. Then we can hit delete and dissolve edges. Now this is very tedious, very time consuming, but again, depending on what you need this model for, you may have to sit here and do this for a little bit. I will show you how actually cleaning up some of this stuff will help whenever we go to fix these stretched textures. So I'm just gonna do that on this line right here so that you can see. Okay, just kidding. I decided to just clean up a little bit more than I intended because it really wasn't that bad after all. And I do think that it will make showing the next part a lot easier. All right, so now let's fix the textures on this object because we've got a whole lot of stretch textures pretty much everywhere. And that's because of all the extruding. So what we can do is right click up here on this um, black and gray sort of division and make sure that we go to vertical split and we're gonna split our screen into two so that we can see our model over here. And then we're also going to come over into the UV editor. Now, what we can do is select this little icon here and make sure that we select the image that we used on our plane. Next, let's come into edit mode by hitting tab on our keyboard. And let's also make sure that we are in face select because it's just gonna be easier that way. And let's select this whole left side of this wall here. Now, you can see over here in the UV image editor side that it looks like there's just a bunch of single vertices in a line here. However, if we come back over here into the viewport side and go back to vertice select, vertex select, 
and bring up all these dots again, you can see that there's actually two dots on each part. And the reason that it looks like one over here is that they're actually stacked together. It's, it'd be kind of like looking at it just like this on a straight on view. You can't really see the side over here. So what we need to do is actually pull these apart. And that's also the reason why it looks like it's very stretched over here. All these like pulled lines of image data. It's because since these vertices are stacked on each other, there's really only like one pixel of image information that it can pull. So that's why it's stretching it over here. I Hopefully that makes sense. So anytime you see stretching, it's because it's not able to pull more than like one pixels worth of information. So what we need to do is pull these apart. And the way that we do that is make sure they're all selected. We can hit A for all if we want because we've got all of these selected. So we wanna make sure that every vertice that we have selected over here is also selected over here. So we hit A to select all of them. And then you can hit U on your keyboard for unwrap and then just select unwrap. And there you go. We can see that it has stretched it, although it's very big and it's taking up the whole image. We can hit S for scale to scale this down to be more in the correct size. And then if I just hover this over here, I'm gonna fix this and be a little bit more accurate in a minute, but you can see already in the viewport side that we have a much better looking image right here. So now what we can do is let's fix this up a little bit. I'm gonna zoom in a little more and hit A for all again. And I'm gonna hit S for scale and just kind of adjust it little by little until it looks like it's about the right width. And there we go. So between scaling and hitting G to grab and move it, I think I've got it lined up pretty well. So now that I've done that, I need to come over here back in to face select. So I'm going to hit three and then any place where I don't want to keep that image, I'm going to just select it and I'm holding shift so that I can select more than one at a time. And that's probably good. So now I've got all these selected over here and now I can hit G to grab it and maybe I'll just move it up a little bit to there. Um, this one looks like it's still not hitting right. So I'm just going to grab those, move these up like that. There we go. This one doesn't look right. So I'm going to click it and hit grab. You can also hit Y on your keyboard and that will snap it. I know this is kind of like the Z axis on the viewport side, but Y is the up and down movement on the UV editor side. So that's very helpful if you just need to move in one direction. So let's select all these, hit G and G and Y and move these down. This one still looks like it needs a little bit of work. So basically I'm just grabbing any, well, this one's being pesky. <laughs> oh, I'm missing one, that's why. There we go. So it's basically just a matter of finding pieces that don't look right and then just moving them. And in theory, I probably shouldn't be moving them all in the same spot. <laughs> That's a good way to make it look not good. So I'm just going to keep dragging and moving stuff until I get this side all fixed up. All right, and so it's not perfect, but it is definitely better than that. <laughs> so that's what we're going for. And you could literally spend hours and hours just like tweaking it and making it perfect. But at the end of the day, you really have to just decide like, what is the amount of work that you wanna put into this? What's the end product for? And is it worth an extra two hours of fixing for just a couple percentage worth of improvement. So it's really up to you how long you wanna spend tweaking all this stuff. Now, another part that is just obviously not looking right is this stretched clock on here. So what I can do is I'm just gonna grab this front face here and then come back over into the UV side and then I'm gonna hit A to select all of it and then G and X so that I can move it over to this side. And let's grab this one. Oh, there's another one down at the bottom. So I'm just gonna grab both of those and bring them over to the other side. And anywhere that there's just kind of like junk on here, I'm just going to move it to the other side. And now for this side, we can do the same thing that we did for the other side of this column and just grab um, maybe up to here. And then over on this side, let's hit A to select all those stacked vertices, then hit U to unwrap 
And you can see this time that it is rotated on its side. So what we need to do is hit R for rotate. And then I'm just going to hit 90 to rotate it in the correct way and then scale to bring it down to a better size. And then let's move it to this column. And there we go. We have fixed that stretching part of that column with the clock on it. And let's grab this one and do the same. Let's just move it over here. Now I'm going to quickly speed through this part and fix all this extra stuff, just using the exact same techniques that I was doing before. Now looking at this, you can see that we've got a little bit of black here on the edge. And what we can do is just grab this part here. You can see that it's kind of overshooting a little bit. We could select all and scale it, or we can just select these vertices here and move them also. So I'm just gonna move those into place and there we go. It's a little bit better now. Okay, so it's not perfect, but it is much better than it was, and I think you get the idea. So even though there was this clock kind of blocking a good chunk of this column, I was still able to use this side to clean up this area to make it look like there was no clock. And I can do the same thing for these ledges up here. All I have to do is select all the faces, and this is why it's kind of important too to clean up your object. But once I select all these, it looks like I'm going to have to unwrap again and scale it down because that's huge. And also I'm going to have to rotate it. So keep that in mind that you may have to do some of that stuff, but maybe I'll move it here. That looks good. So I'm just gonna stick it here and yeah. So yeah, it's not too bad having to clean up your object. Like it's not necessarily hard. It's just a lot of tedious work that you know, it just depends because if the camera was down this way, you may not even need to fix that ledge up here. Also, it should hopefully make sense now why it is a good idea to clean up a lot of those extra vertices and edges because it's just a lot of extra clicking faces to select them whenever you go to clean them up. So fixing all the stretched textures really is a lot easier if you don't have all those extra faces and edges and vertices. And now one last thing, and this really depends on your final output of your object, but back here in the back, you can see it's really kind of messy back here. There's no closed face. And what you could do is just select this outside face here with Alt and then hit F to close off the face. And depending on how clean you wanted to make this, you could just select all of this in face mode like that and maybe scale it down and just bring it over here into a black spot. And you've just got a closed face back here now, which again, if you're just doing this for art and your camera's on this side, it may not matter if you have anything on the back. All right, and that will do it. Thank you so much for hanging out with me today, guys. Again, I wanna know, what do you think? Is this cheating or not? Now that you've seen the process, I'm curious, what do you think? Personally, I don't think that it's cheating. A lot of work does go into creating 3D models, even from images. Now, if you wanna see a time lapse of me creating a scene using this technique on buildings and neon signs and air conditioners and like hardware units, and stuff, you can check out this video right up here. Otherwise, have a great rest of your day and we will catch you in the next video.